Hi everyone, my name is Tim Holtzman. I'm an Associate Professional Clinical Counselor. I work in private practice out of Berkeley, California. I'm here today interviewing Ryan Hoffman. Ryan works in private practice as well in San Francisco and Berkeley. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, you're welcome. Glad to be here. Yeah, yeah. Would you like to start us off with a little introduction of yourself? Sure, sure. Uh, so, as you mentioned, I'm also a therapist. I am a marriage and family therapy associate. I'm about 50 hours of the 3,000, 50 hours away from 3,000 needed to be fully licensed, uh, and then I'll take my licensing exam. Uh, I did my undergrad work at University of Michigan in Ann Arbor, where I studied psychology. I did my graduate school work at John F. Kennedy University out here in California. Uh, where I studied transpersonal psychology counseling. I wrote my thesis on the spiritually emergent experience uh, versus a spiritual emergency and psychosis, uh, and how to integrate spiritually emergent experience into psychotherapy. Um, spiritually emergent experience being kind of transpersonal states that come about through uh, medicine work or breath work or uh, dancing or fasting or just spontaneous spiritual experience. Um, yeah, I work through Grateful Heart Holistic Therapy Center uh, where I'm lucky to be a part of a lot of other uh, interns and associates. Um, and as you mentioned, I have offices in both the East Bay and in San Francisco. In Berkeley, I'm in the Gourmet Ghetto. And in San Francisco, I'm in the Financial District. All right, so uh, the next question. How do mindfulness and somatic-based interventions increase the effectiveness of therapy? And what effects do they offer in comparison to more traditional forms of therapy? Sure. Uh, so yeah, I think that mindfulness in particular is one of the most important tools we have uh, just as people in the world and also within the therapeutic context where we're trying to create change. Uh, mindfulness of the somatic, absolutely, and also being able to track kind of emotional, cognitive, and uh, spiritual levels of experience or channels of experience. Um, if we really truly are able to bring mindfulness to these and track these, um, we, we're able to get all the information that we have as, as human beings on this planet. Um, it's especially important in therapy where a lot of activation can happen in the system. Um, we need to be able to activate the system and stir it up a little bit to create things like excitement and engagement and um, new awarenesses. But if we overactivate the system, we can get into dysregulation and kind of trauma responses like fight, flight, freeze, uh, submit. Um, and this is actually kind of counterproductive to therapy. It can actually lead to regression. Uh, so as a clinician, and, and what I encourage my clients to do is really pay, pay careful attention to their somatic experience to get clues to how activated or inactivated they are. Mm -hmm. So um, paying attention to breath, uh, heart rate, um, kind of kinetic movement, um, all these layers help us understand where we're at in that zone. Um, once we get too activated, we need to slow things down and, and bring ourselves back to the present moment, back into our bodies, so that rather than these trauma responses showing up, uh, more adaptive uh, responses can show up and kind of arise naturally out of uh, our systems. Nice. So to the next question, um, do you specialize in treating a specific issue such as anxiety, depression, couples conflict, etc.? And if so, in what ways do mindfulness and somatic-based interventions particularly suit these type of specialties? Sure, yeah. Um, I think it's hard to name a particular specialty. Um, I, if I had to, I would say um, relationship conflict. Um, and you know, I work with this both individually uh, and uh, in couples. Um, but I also feel like all these other things, depression, anxiety, trauma, they're all so interwoven um, that it's really important to kind of be a jack of all trades uh, when, when working with relationship conflict. Um, it's important to keep in mind uh, the physiology, but also um, 
the family history, uh, the trauma history, kind of the cross-cultural, uh, intergenerational heritage. Um, all of these factors go into how we perceive the world and how we perceive each other and, and what our behavioral responses we've been taught uh, are and, and the ones we've come to choose for ourselves. Um, if we can really bring mindfulness to the complexity of this experience and adjust how many variables are impacting us as we're relating, we can um, kind of work through a lot of the programming we have and actually get to a much more open, vulnerable uh, way of communicating with each other. Um, it, and, and that's not always fun. It actually can be really painful um, to, to examine our blind spots, uh, to really do the kind of shadow work that's necessary to get to better uh, relationships. Um, and that's where the somatic piece really comes in handy. Uh, is being able to track just how um, activated we are versus regulated. So, you know, often in my couple sessions, I'll notice that things are starting to get a little heated, or uh, one partner's raising their voice, or I notice another partner's holding their breath. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really important to slow the system down, uh, both the bodies and also um, the minds and kind of the, the in-between, the relationship itself. Um, so that we can get stay out of kind of those trauma responses I mentioned and be in a more open, vulnerable, uh, authentic state where um, we're hearing our partners more fully and we're able to stay curious about them and we're staying out of our defenses uh, that prevent us from taking that information in. So are there any mindfulness or somatic-based interventions that you'd like to use with your clients? Perhaps you have a favorite one or two that you'd like to describe to the audience? Sure. Yeah, I would love to. Um, I think my number one favorite and the kind of the simplest one, the, the simplest take home is just to slow down, uh, especially when working with uh, relationship conflict. Uh, what I, what happens in most relationship conflicts is things get really sped up. There, there's a quick back and forth. Uh, and in that, a lot of information gets lost in translation. Um, as our systems get activated, uh, what they call threat emotions show up and our perception of reality goes way down. Uh, we think we're understanding what our partner is saying, but really we're making lots of assumptions and there's lots of conjecture in there and mm -hmm. we're, we're filtering what they're saying through our own experience and expectations and projections um, and we're, we're not getting the most accurate information. Um, so in the slowing down process, I, I, one way to slow down is just to really repeat back what you think you heard and, and check if that's accurate. Mm. Um, but it's not just in slowing down kind of the verbal back and forth or to bring in the somatic, a really important way to slow down is to actually check in with the body. Notice like, am I breathing at all? Some people are holding their breath. Am I breathing too quickly? Am I starting to kind of hyperventilate? Uh, can we slow down and regulate the breath? Uh, can we get back into our bodies um, in, in a way that feels more grounded and, and kind of recentering? Uh, sometimes I have clients just stop and pause until they notice their heart rates come back down and they're kind of more in an optimal uh, zone for themselves where they can actually um, start perceiving things more accurately mm. um, rather than perceiving them through this feeling of being threatened um, where defenses arise. Another favorite um, is like kind of embodiment of emotion uh, or embodiment of thoughts, um, authentic movement. So often if I notice a client is kind of in their, their cognitive content and they're, they're really lost in story, I'll invite them to really embody um, their process. Uh, so if they're saying like no or yes, can they say no or yes with their body? So not just like, oh no, but like no. Um, hmm. Or can I say yes in a way that's like really opening and accepting of, of what's coming rather than like, yeah, I think yes. Um, and this, the, the goal of that is really to, um, 
to to ground it in the whole system, whatever is being experienced, not just kind of a, a cognitive thought, but really to embody the thought and really integrate it into uh, the whole system and start building connections between what we're thinking and, and what we're feeling. Yeah, kind of like what you said before, just like having that grounded body and that sort of just overall groundedness while well, having some difficult mental activity is in a way reshaping the brain. You know, it's, it's learning to be able to tolerate increased difficulty while still being embodied. So. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So. Um, there, It's a great yoga metaphor I like to use, getting comfortable in the discomfort. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, so being able to tolerate conflict, kind of this, this difficult relating, uh, while keeping the nervous system regulated and not kind of going into the place of threat or panic. Nice, nice. Okay, on to the next question. So what other theoretical frameworks or viewpoints influence your work with your clients? Yeah, uh, so a lot. Uh, I find myself inspired by many different approaches to understanding consciousness. Uh, some of the ones that I've been most influenced by at this point in my career are uh, psychodynamic approaches, um, transpersonal, existential lenses, um, emotion-focused therapy has been really useful, especially in couples work, mm. uh, EMDR to work with trauma, um, as well as to get at the spiritual medicine journey work, systems theories, uh, depth psychology. Um, I really try to keep an open-minded approach to and, and kind of a constantly evolving approach to doing the therapy work. Um, kind of a, a post-postmodern mindset where all of these different modalities have really important parts of the truth or, or pieces to the puzzle, but there really isn't one panacea that uh, is the perfect um, medicine for everyone. I really believe that there's a place for all of these different approaches in therapy and, and part of my life work is to integrate as many of them as possible into my way of uh, relating to myself but also to my clients uh, and passing that information along. So, so true. Yeah. And so my last question for you today, how do you personally use mindfulness and body-based awareness practices to enhance your own life? Yeah, uh, great question. Um, yeah, so I, I've studied meditation, I've studied yoga, uh, I've studied um, just kind of other somatic uh, body-based awareness practices um, in, in different schools I've had, or different classes I've had in grad school. Um, and what I learned is there's a lot of information available in the body. Um, and my body tends to get uh, very activated very quickly. Um, so you know, as I was advocating for earlier, really being aware of that and being able to slow myself myself down, um, really noticing as I'm kind of leaving my, my window of tolerance, so to speak, a place where I'm getting too activated, noticing the fight or flight come up, um, wanting to just dismiss a relationship or someone or just say it's not worth it to talk about this, um, and really being able to slow myself down in those moments and take some deep breaths or, or go for a walk or, or kind of pause the conversation and come back to it when I'm more regulated has really helped me stay in a lot of relationships, um, whether that's friends or my partner of 11 years. Um, and, and it's also helped me relate to myself in a different way, to recognize when I'm being unfair to myself or unfair to others um, and being able to slow down and check my, my perceptions. Uh, and my behaviors. Um, it, it, mindfulness, um, somatic awareness have been transformative. All right, so my uh, last thing for you is just to see if you want to leave the audience with anything else. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so first off to you, thank you, Tim, uh, for having me here. It's been a really great opportunity to put into words what I kind of intuitively know and, and how I work. Uh, it's been a great exercise and uh, as I was talking about earlier, kind of integrating the information into a whole body system rather than just kind of intuitive or emotional or somatic. Um, and to anyone listening out there, if you're looking to start therapy, uh, I'd be happy to meet with you and see uh, if, if we would be a good fit to work together. 
Um, I, you can find all my information at my website, uh, which is www.bayareaholisticpsychotherapy.com. All right, well, thanks so very much for coming out and doing this interview with me today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, it's been a good time. Yeah, and thanks everyone out there listening in. <laughs>